Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another airbrush step-by-step. -step. This is the one we are doing in tonight's video. So I've got the actual image all projected up and pencil lined out. So very lightly penciled out in a HP pencil. Other pieces we've got that we're going to use that you're going to see come in play on this. We've got a standard eraser. We've got a Posca paint pen, a fine one in white. We've got some shields and we've got some different ones tonight. We've got some miniature shields, these little dinky ones here that are really cool. So I'm gonna show you these a bit later on when we come to use them. The paint mix, I will pop up in the screen right now. So that's the paint mix we are using. They are just sort of guidelines, guys. That's the mix that I've sort of created when I was doing the miniature portraits and I've sort of brought it across to do the bigger ones. Now, if you're doing a bigger portrait, you need to mix more paint. So they're just sort of a guideline on their mixes there to make a bigger batch. And that's what we've got here. I've got the Wicked mixed with the isopropanol and water in here. I've not tried it in the airbrush yet, but I always say when we, before we start, go to the side, test your brush, your pressure and your paint. We may have to drop a little bit of water in that or a bit more isopropanol, but we'll, we'll see that as we're moving closer. The brush, if you've not seen it, and if you're thinking of getting one, it's the new Hardware Steenbeck Evolution CR Plus. I would highly recommend it, guys. I really would. It is a phenomenal brush. It really is. I can't put it down at the minute. I've done these five videos back to back doing these portraits with this brush and absolutely love it. It speeds you up. The trigger response is brilliant. The trigger top is really comfortable and that's what you want. I'm blasting these videos out for you guys. These are around, these pieces are taking me around an hour and 30 up to two hours max on these pieces. And sitting with this brush, you get no finger fatigue. The only times I've been getting tip dry is because, because my back's playing up, I've got hot air from the heater just here, and it's I've got it blowing warm, warm air on my back to keep my back warm as I'm painting. So I've got a lot of heat coming across here, blowing across. So with you keeping the air on with your paint, I'm getting a bit of tip dry, but that's the only time. I've used this brush, not in the direct line of warm air coming through, and it's been brilliant tip dry. But we all get, we all suffer from tip dry on brushes anyway, so that's something you're not gonna stop. But everything else about it, really, really cool. The only thing I've put on this brush extra is a cap to the top. I've got the Geraldes cap on the top of this the lid and it just saves your paint from drying up. So that's the brush we're using. The air pressure that you've seen pop up, we're running 22. I've just kept it the same in the studio. That's set at 22. That's sort of my go-to set now for airbrushing. It's 22 on the main line and then we've got the Mac valve on the airline so I can adjust it down to around 7 or 8 psi. Whatever you feel comfortable spraying at. But if you are going up close and you're using a thin mix like this, you've got to sort of bring your pressure back. Now there was a comment on the channel, mm. on one of the videos, recent ones, on how, how does it erase the pencil and not take away the paint. Now, when you've got your mix with this, with the isoprope and water with the Wicked, this paper, it's quite thick. I'll pop it up in the screen now. This is the one we're using. Now, your paint will absorb in this. It's like when you spray on canvas, it absorbs in. <clears throat> and then what it's doing is it's leaving the graphite of the pencil on top and your paint's absorbing sort of past that. So you can go in with your eraser and just erase out your pencil lines. It works really well. That's why I'm sticking to this sort of paper at the minute. You can't do like scratch back and eraser techniques with this because the paint just absorbs in. If you were to gesso this, and I've gessoed this paper in the past, you can do that with this. You can gesso it, 
sand it really smooth and then you've got a real sort of shiny surface. So we could go that way with this paint, but then my painting will slow down again. But then you've got the added bonus of, you can do the eraser techniques on that and you can do scratchbacks in your hair textures and things. If you wanted to get them real fine hairlines, you can do it that way. But we're not doing any sort of erasing or scratchback. This is just straight airbrushing down. And I think it's a good one to practice with a transparent. It really is. It speeds you up and it gets you to practice layering up your paints because that's what we're doing. We're sort of layering the paints up to make them darker. So I'm really digging working in transparent at the minute. I just, I think it's my go-to and that's where I'm gonna stick. If you find your niche and the style of artwork that you like, just stick to it guys and enjoy it because you will enjoy it. Like I'm enjoying this style of artwork with the paints and with the brush. If I started going down other routes where I'm sort of really pushing myself it just becomes an absolute ball ache. It really does, and you don't enjoy it. So find your niche, find the artwork style you like, and just stick to it. So I've waffled on long enough. We're gonna move the camera in, and I'm gonna babble on a little bit more as we talk you through this piece. So enjoy the video, guys. Let's crack on. Right, guys, I've sort of brought you in a bit closer. I'm just sort of playing around with camera settings at the minute. I just hope this one's clear enough for you to see. I've sort of got it zoomed near enough over my shoulder. So you're just gonna sort of catch my hands hopefully in the shot. Now, 22 on the main line. We're gonna bring that in. That's around eight to nine, I'd say. All right, prong cap off. And now we're just gonna try this paint mix just to see what it's like. back. Now, that's what I mean by this brush. I mean, look how fine that brush can get down. It is incredible. And this is a 0 0.28. This is why I'm really liking this brush at the minute. Now I'm just going to mix this paint up with the stirrer because it's been sitting. I mixed it earlier on. So I'm just going to give it another mix up. You'll find this with this paint, if you're doing this mix, when you've got it in your airbrush, it's it will sort of like want to separate. So the beauty of the HS Evo with the prong cap is you can back bubble it very easy. If you've got your prong cap on like that, you can just pinch over the front and just give it a little back bubble. So I think we're good to go at that. Might need to go thinner. Might need just to thin that down a bit. So we're going to go a bit of isoprope. Do a little back bubble. I'm just gauging on how far my finger's coming back to release it. Just getting it dialed in. That's the one. You just tell when you've got it. It won't sound as grainy. So we're gonna go with that. Right, start going in on the eyes like before, just dropping a tone down. 
this video might be over two sections guys so you're going to get a bit tonight and then you're going to get some tomorrow because this is i wouldn't say it's as much detail as the last one but it's just a lot to edit when you're doing a two hour long video it really is so if i can break this one up into a couple of stages now we're going really soft and light you can see how light this is I'm just dropping a tone around this eye and then just to the bit of the nose here onto the other eye so I'm glad you're enjoying these step by steps and picking something up along the way that's what it's about um, because when I started, there wasn't videos like this. And to get this information, you're either going on a class, because YouTube didn't have anything like this on when I started. So if I can give as much as I can, I will, guys. And that's what it's about. Because I struggled when I started out. There's nothing worse than struggling. So we're coming down the side of the face, nice and light. Coming down to the shadow underneath the mouth. And as you can see, it's probably hardly anything on that image you're seeing. Very, very light. Coming down here. on the nose down the side of the nose here just going in on the bottom and under the nose here Corner of the mouth to drop a bit there. We're just going to tone in on this face. Side here. So just backing off with the brush. I'm hands distance away. Coming back round the So that's a pass round the face, just sort of mapped in. We can drop some under the jaw. This is very, very washed out. Back onto the We are going to change this mix up because this doesn't seem like it's flowing right to me. Right, we've done another mix. Two drops of Wicked and I just put, well up to there with isopropanol and two drops of water in there, mixed a bit of water and this is on point now. Right, back in on the eyes. I could just tell that mix wasn't having it. And that mix did have some of the old left in it from yesterday when I did a piece. Yeah, this is releasing loads better now. I could just tell by the trigger. I was moving the trigger too far back to release the pain. Now it's on absolute point. So we're going to drop this eye in. Not put the actual bit on the eye here. 
One piece I've missed out on projecting up. Right, we'll just go with what I can see. Paint it and see how we get on. You'll find that sometimes you'll do a piece of artwork and you miss something out and it's like... Argh. A vital bit. So just double check when you're projecting. Just double check what you're um, putting down on your lines. So we're just doing some light passes on this. And just sort of building it up. Work this in. You just know when you've got the paint right, you can hit tiny little dagger strokes like that and just build it up. Yeah, paint's flowing really nice now. I'm literally just sort of pushing down on the trigger. I'm not having to pull back like I did a minute ago to get the paint to release. A lot of the time with airbrushing is your paint guys, it really is. It's getting your paint dialed in. Any brush can be a, you can be frustrated with no matter what you've got. It can be a micron in your hand, a 500 pound brush down to a 20 pound brush. If you've not got that paint mix right, it's not going to flow. It's all about how it releases and the atomization of it. Same with big spray guns, you can be just frustrated with that if you don't get your paint mix right. If you're mixing your clear coat way too thick, it's not going to have it. I'd rather have thin paint like this and build it up then struggle trying to get a thick acrylic through I really would so we just first pass we can tighten all these edges up just building the paint up Nothing fancy on this bit, just... I can drop these around this nose. Little bit down here. So I do this in a couple of stages. We're just going in freehand. You can see we're just sort of mapping the image out, nice and light. This will go a lot darker. Dagger strokes, you're doing small, dagger strokes 
backwards and forwards, just building. the layers up just bring this a bit round the forehead in uh, move around with a little bit more here back in on this eye Drop that in while we're here, just to pass over there. As I say, this is the first pass, so moving on this ear. Nice and light. Drop a bit of paint in. We can sharpen things up a little bit later with shields. Just dropping a little bit of painting on that. Back down, drop a little bit under this jawline here. Dusting it in. Bottom of the lip. Now we'll drop the lip in. So Get some painting on that. We can build on this and just Add more. Little dagger strokes flicking it upwards. Drop this line in a bit darker. Here. This goes a lot darker here. Around the bottom of the lip, not chatting much, but 
just getting some paint in back on this nose a little bit there So we're mapping it out. tone in here just below the ear now we can start using these miniature shields these are pocket graphics by Scott McKay so if you follow Scott McKay's channel you will know they're a brilliant little shield set they really are good you get the little intricate shapes that you can use We're just mapping it out. You can see how transparent this is. Put some of these little flick outs in. We can erase off these lines, not a problem. Let's get the shapes in round here. Right. Get this emblem here on her face. Just nice and up close. So we're all looking forward to the new Infinity then. Now, after using the Evo, what I'm using now, if you've got an Evo, the new one, and you really like it, I think you are gonna love the new Infinity because I, I have seen it and I have tried bits on it 
and it's going to be amazing guys it really is because this thing is as i say you get your paint mix right and they're just brilliant brushes Right, I'll just start darkening this air up. A little bit, a little bit more paint. So we're mapping it out. I'm going to come back in on this eye. A little bit of colour in here. This is going to go a lot darker and I can I can really sharpen this up with some shields a bit later on. Not a problem. Just sort of getting all the bits in place. Right, a little bit. Right, we can get this piece in. Just going in freehand. Wear out of paint. Drop a little bit of paint in. Nice up close, just dropping this in. Couple of dots here. So just working nice and light, we're working it all into that sort of tone.
one up a bit. And here. Building the eyes up. What we'll do now is we're just going to go in in a minute and just knock off. Now I've got that mapped out, we can just go in and just knock out these bits. Take some of them lines out. Now I've got the plate things in place. Just going to pop these highlights in place just to keep them there. Just makes the eyes go. The minute you just put that little white dot in there, or if you put like the ones that sit on the bottom of the eyelid, the, one, the minute you put them highlights, it just goes boom. And then you do your darks and put them dots in, it just pops the eyes straight the way, simplest of things. Right, let's just darken this eyebrow up now.
So yeah, it's going to be a shorter video tonight and then we can continue this on tomorrow. So working nice and light, we're doing just dagger strokes. It's basically dagger strokes moving with your brush. On and off, minimal trigger with the paint, on and off, on and off. Just building it up. dark in here and then we can just gauge this you just gauge it then when you drop a dark to the edge minute you drop them darks just start to this is going to go a lot darker here but the minute you do this i think you can just judge where you're going on how dark the rest is going to be on your face when you start to drop the darks at the side you can just see where you need to go darker Bring that down. Bring that. Do that freehand. Working a line around the bottom of the face. And then we can just roll into that. Angle the brush nice and soft. Bring that down. Into here, quite sharp here. Sort of bumps round. That's it. See how it needs to go darker under the nose now. It just makes you just go back over. Once you put them darks in, 
you can instantly see where you need to go. Darker with stuff. Just need that little. I'm going to go darker on that. Just in here. So we'll have a little pause. Right guys, you've seen, we've just sort of building it up and building it up and building it up. Gone in really nice and light with this. And you can see the tones on this image here. If this was in grayscale, you'd be doing this piece here black. So we've got a lot more to go on this. Darkening it out, darkening it out. Round here. But we've mapped the face in. <clears throat> And we're just going to work up. Now I'm going to call this one it for tonight. And then we'll start tomorrow's one. And we're going to work the hair in. Round here. And we'll just get it to this tone. We'll get all the image down to this tone. And then we'll go back over. And we'll start working it and working it. And darkening it and darkening it. As we go along and sharpening things up. I will make another mix. This mix is very, very thin. So I'm going to lid this one off, save that mix for tomorrow, and I'm going to do slightly darker mix, just add a little bit more paint, get it a little bit darker, and then we can work this one. And just darken and then sharpen these things up. And we can just, once you get the darks and put the shields and start to sharpen the areas up, it really does tighten the image up and makes it pop. So if you do it all nice and loose, Continue working nice and loose, and then where you need to put these sharps with the darks, you can just go in and pop them sharp edges out. So I hope you've enjoyed part one on this portrait. Drop your comments, tell me your thoughts, and then we'll move on to the second part of this tomorrow. So thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, if you are new to the channel and you're liking this style of content, just hit that subscribe and press that notification and then you won't miss out on any more up and coming ones like this. So see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.